Right. Okay. So first of all, thank you all of you to uh, for attending my session actually. Although like, you know, I had the session last week, so on few requests, so I am just repeating the session again. And today we're going to learn about uh, some DC psychology. It is uh, not related to some personality things or any personality tools to trade something like that. It is totally different. It is related to if you know, if you're a professional, if you in, in your personal life, anywhere it is applicable and it is a process where you get to know about your ambiguity relief process through brain means how your brains get clarity. Let me share my screen first and then we can proceed further. Let me open. Okay. Once you see my screen, just let me know. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Right. So um, this journey actually it is about like um, it's, it's into three phases. Number one is uh, being right, which is you can say it's more or less you know how you're gonna achieve certain objectives and how you get clarity and how you reach uh, uh, to achieve something and uh, you know with tackling different sort of problems uh, while achieving your goals. Second part is colored brain which actually gives you an overview of uh, how your brain gets clarity and how you can you know remove the barriers and then move forward and the third one is emotional drive so uh, we'll move on uh, with the story if any time if you see you can't see the screen you can just let me know and i can go back or forward right so like in this story you can see there are three characters one is mary the other one is Jack and the third one is Rama. I'll give you a little bit brief of it. Rama actually, he is the hero of the story. Like he is, the, you know, he wanted to achieve something. Jack is like a person who is, uh, Vishnu is again coming in, I guess. Yeah, Jack is... <laughs> So, uh, in these three characters, uh, Jack is the one who is kind of villain of the story, and Mary, she is the one. Uh, she always, you know, go with the flow. She said, "Can't see the screen." Sorry, I can't see your screen. Okay, let me. See. I've already shared it again. Yeah. Now you can see, right? <clears throat> yeah. Right. So in this characters, uh, Mary is the one. She goes with the flow. She said, okay, if someone is saying, she said, okay, she don't think she is just an observer and she just, uh, if anyone saying, oh, do this, she'll do that. So this is the starting of the story. In this story, now they were like discussing few things and Rama wanted to achieve something big. So they are in a jungle, they are in a forest, and then they move forward. And they see a scroll of environment. Scroll of environment is like what? Normally, we, every one of us, we are in some sort of an environment, right? We react to some environment and people get reaction based on other people's reaction. So it is all about us. It is all about the environment that we are. You know, if you see yourself, for example, <clears throat> you are working somewhere, something went wrong. Okay, and you start complaining, oh, you know, he's, he's not right and he's like that. The environment is so bad. I don't want to work. And you start, you know, complaining every, every time. Same happened with you at times in some other environment. So what happened is the same problem maybe after four months of time when you start thinking, you know, you're making the right decision or kind of right or something. Something is there in your mind. And then again, you start getting back. So in the end, we found out that it is environment which is around you. And you know who's the common denominator in this environment? It is you actually, because you are affecting environment and people are affecting you. So you need to see why people are reacting or why you are reacting. So by learning different things, we'll come to know why we are reacting and why people are reacting to our actions, right? So these people, they move on 
to the next part and they found about uh, hero hero of the story if i'll ask you amit for example if i ask you what do you think what should be a hero should look, look like or what is a hero i think a hero is a team player okay what do you think vishnu uh, an influencer influencer yep what about you katrina what do you think hero should be in your maybe in your back of your mind okay this is should be a hero for example like a caring person or compassionate person yes you you all are right you know what normally when we think about heroes right i mean maybe superhero for example you said he he has got a lot of powers he got a lot of you know supernatural powers or maybe he he can do a lot of things for us for example right so normally hero in normal lives a person who can who, who could be a very good teamwork who can really care who care for people who can tackle problems and all these things so hero in this story he wanted to tackle a lot of problems but again there are people like jack who are always complaining he need to tackle such type of people so because you know people like jack they are affecting other people they are affecting the environment and those environment when affected it, you are get affected so here we're going to learn how we're going to tackle all those problems so uh, i'll move on to the next part i'll let you know about the dc psychology story a short one a quick one how it started actually uh, like our, our the managing director of dc psychology he was a very successful uh, ceo of a very big company in south korea and he was doing very fine and then you know he said he was doing franchisee work and then later on he decided okay let's move on to uh, some other country and let's have my own work he started that working he invested a lot of money he borrowed loan and all that stuff and down the line maybe 2 3 months he start thinking you know things are not getting uh better and he getting into loss once he started getting loss he said no i will be in huge debts so what he did he said i need to work somewhere else he said i got loads of experience i can do anything where i will go he joined another company and in that other company he start you know he said okay can you do we do this can we do this he start giving his own opinion so that you know he was so excited he said oh yes i can make a difference i can i can really uh, do wonders and all that because he was so much excited and what he found out that you know people start saying no no you are not supposed to do we have our own task and you know people start blaming he saw the blaming culture the blame game and no cooperation people said no we don't want to do thank you very much and what happened down the line after one or two months he got meat sucked by the environment and he start himself uh, blaming other people that you know it's not working it's not like that and all that and he will actually become the environment was so uh, you can say toxic that he become part of it and he start he got sucked so knowing that he can do a lot of things he can make difference but still you can't do because of the environment itself he realized why not to do something to tackle those problems he researched something and then he said okay he proposed few things and based on those things the company got 17000 dollars per week profit i mean the uh, rather the waste saving it is uh, it's a positive uh, sign for the company and that is how he developed his own company he researched a lot of things and then reached uh, to the dc psychology thing and that comprises of different modules so this is a short story of uh, dc psychology now in the story we'll move forward and we'll learn about uh, the bigger problems how and why these bigger problems came and when we talk about problems we need to identify why what are the root causes of those problems once you don't okay once you don't know the root cause you cannot able to tackle those problems you cannot able to achieve what you wanted to achieve so in this world of work map it is it is kind of a a problem statement you can define your root causes and then work towards for the solution of the root problem so in this different use case, you can see the meeting land the land of solitude the land of team com, uh, container of communication you know it's all revolves around different sort of problems and then based on that you identify your problems and then work out how to overcome those problems 
that will be you know maybe you can discuss later now this guy jack who is actually the villain of the story and he is like that he said you know this is what type of environment is this you know i i really don't want to work in this environment and here we're going to learn about four insanities four insanities which are really i mean you once you'll find out you said really it is like that the first uh, insanity is uh, fairness normally what happens is you are working somewhere and your colleague he's got promoted and then it is based on your thinking your perception that why he's got promoted i was so good i i should be promoted and why he i mean why i was not being promoted he was so demotivated without knowing what is the reason behind it maybe the other person is really good at his competency maybe he is really good at the new role you are not fit in your boss saying that you know it's not right time for you to get promoted so but again you start thinking because no it's not fair and you get to start demotivated you get de you know disengaged and you said no it's not working for me second one is uh, common sense which you feel suppose if i am doing something i said okay this is common sense but definitely everybody thinking style everybody approach is totally different and you won't expect that you know if i if something is common sense for me it might not be common sense for some other person as well so it is natural that you know people start thinking on these lines that you know it's not common sense why he's not doing this and again you create some sort of picture against that person the third one is uh, if i can do it other people can do it as well similarly i am playing some game and you know i start thinking you know it's so easy just go and hit the ball and the other person if he is unable to do it it's not his fault because he really can't do it but you think when i can do it everybody can do it so this is again the perception thing so it's all about perceptions and thinking styles how we are thinking taking things and the last one is truth is universal you perceive you said okay go and do these things and you are doing certain things in a certain way and when you told someone you think again that he will going to do that thing in your way which you you know you are doing it he is doing it in some other way so that again creates a conflict between you and that other person so again it's all about perception how you are taking how you are perceiving how you are judging things but other person is doing something else so you are not aware of all these things so once you are aware of those insanities all those four insanities definitely you will going to work in a much much more better way with less conflicts so uh again uh, you know uh, there is a concept known as a reticular activating system it is it is your brain system and it's your brain radar actually and it's keep you awake it focuses on what is relevant to your life okay and your perceptions so it, i'm not going to too much details you know it deletes what is not relevant to your perceptions and you focus on something so these three characters now move on and found the sort of focus and that is there ta 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 yes the sort of focus it is very very important how focus is affecting how for if you are focused definitely you will going to achieve whatever you want to achieve but again if your focus is missed you will be nowhere i show you a quick video just go through this video if you can hear it let me share my volume first you yes is an awareness test can you hear yeah okay just look at how many passes does the team in white make no count the passes answer is 13 but did you see the moon walking bear so how many of you actually count the passes I can't say about eleven, but it was uh, very lagging. The video, oh. so okay. And uh, <laughs> did you notice the beer? 
kind of is is pretty hard to tell from from this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know. And normally, what happened, you know, it's about the focus. They said, okay, you need to focus on passes, right? And you know, our brain, this RAS, the reticular activating system, it's focusing on how people are giving passes, right? And we are start mm-hmm. counting passes rather than you know someone came in and he's moved forward. So we don't we ignore those things and we start you know are focusing on something else. So that is called RAS, and that actually is very important. And you know, it actually it, it affects your perception, you your way of looking at things. You don't see at times a lot of things which uh, are there, but your focus is on something else. So this is uh, this is very important uh, uh, thing which you which really need to understand that how this focus thing uh, affect our performances as well. Because if you you know if you're focusing on something else, for example, we are focusing on. Uh, people, okay, we said, okay, this is how he's doing, but rather than, you know, the objective, people are going to fail because, you know, we start looking at the process. Maybe you need to, you know, the objective that I'm going to achieve this objective and how I'm going to achieve is a totally different thing. So it affects people as well. So uh, have you seen people often live up to the expectation of their environment? Definitely this environment thing again affecting you. It perpetuates your behavior as well. It has a major impact. Similarly, if I'll ask you, any one of you, what do you think should be an ideal working environment? <clears throat> Vishnu, what do you think? What should be an inclusive. ideal working environment? Kind of an inclusive uh, environment where everyone is treated and respected. Right. Very true. What about you, Amit? Um, well, I would say that you, you should get a chance to portray your inner thoughts about, you know, uh, an issue and then you have a team that listens to you and then, you know, they reciprocate your view. Right. Exactly. Normally, you know what, you both are right. Like I do, everybody wants, you know, an environment where there will be team building. There should be a culture where you should, you know, you get respect. Okay. You will get rewarded. You will get motivated. You, you will be engaged. So this is, all are working ideal working environment and you know at times what happen in organization if everybody has the same vision right then why cannot we achieve it at times there are some barriers you know we all know that you know they, this is the objective and we're going to achieve it mm. but at times we were unable to achieve it you know why because again as i said we start focusing on the processes itself rather than the objective you know oh Mr. X, oh, Mr. Amit, he's doing this way. And, you know, we start focusing on that rather than, you know, the bigger picture, the bigger objective. And that creates, again, the problem. And that RAS, you know, this RAS shifted our focus to something else. Shifted our focus rather than from the objective to that particular person, how he's doing things. And that creates problem. Maybe he's doing things in his own way, but it will reach to the objective, but we don't focus. At times it happens in an organization and in working environment as well. So this we need to really think, okay, let's focus on objectives less and uh, don't focus on people processes because that will gonna achieve it. But again, you're, you should not be you know, blinded by the, your uh, you know, final objective. So you see here, we fail because we focus again, we focus on people and that also creates some sort of, you know, people said, you know, he's also, he's micromanaging me. He's like, uh, he wanted me to do certain things and you again, develop perceptions and that creates sort of problem. Let's say mm. in this, uh, using a barometer, everybody has their own way of doing things. Okay. If you are really very smart, you said, okay, this is, this is the way actually I, you need to check the height of a building. Okay. Someone said, okay, I'll put this thing with a string and down the line, I will check. Someone said, okay, I'll calculate the, uh, the, you can say the shadow of this, this thing. And then I'll minus this from the barometer. I'll put it at the ground. So every person's object, you know, they are dif- doing it in a different way, but focusing on objective mean, you know, you need to act intelligently instead of reacting because you know, if you start, you start focusing on processes, then you know you you will tend to make conflicts you will tend to make mistakes and you will tend to in a way unintentionally you are disengaging your workforce and that is affecting the overall performance of the teams itself 
now I'll move to the next part. It's a very interesting one. And uh, you know what, to be right, what you suppose, for example, I ask you, Amit, you, you play, you are a coach, for example, okay? And to be right, and to, to give an extra, you can say, uh, you can say, I said, okay, Amit, he don't know much. You know, he, he just know a little bit and he's, he's become a coach. And you know what, once you, you want to be right, you start blaming people. And it's very easy to blame everyone, you know. We must make others wrong. And that is uh, true. You will find it maybe at your workplace or maybe you can you see your children, you know, oh, he's doing wrong, he's like that and he's wrong. So you, you know, blaming is very easy. And how, uh, you know, uh, once you start blaming, then what happened? You start losing your focus. Suppose if someone starts blaming me, I'm doing something, definitely I'm gonna lost my focus, okay? Now, now I'm gonna focus on how to tackle that person who, who is blaming me. And then, you know, your focus is totally shifted from your objective to uh, in a defensive mode. You start saying, okay, no, 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 it's, not like, it's, it's you know, you always reacting in that particular way because of that blame thing. So in this, uh, you know, you need to create a no blame zone in organization or maybe in your life, whatever, you need to have some sort of no blame zone, which will enable you to come out of it and have a culture where actually you can be successful, your teams could be successful. So uh, in this, you know, uh, how to create actually this kind of uh, uh, no blame zone is definitely, let's say there's a website, there's a no blame sign. Normally in organization, this is as per practice I'm telling you, they download this no blame sign, big no blame sign, and they said, okay. And uh, educated starting people, okay, you know, if someone starting, okay, if someone tried to blame you, make it in a fun way. And, you know, the, the fun way could be maybe if someone is blaming you, then are you blaming me? Or something like that. And, you know, you are actually not directly saying something that, you know, are you, going to, are you blaming me? And it was totally different. But once you have this thing, in place that oh no blame zone and if you say okay are you blaming me so it will become in a more fun way rather than you know otherwise in normal circumstances it will be a conflict you will be in trouble but we need to minimize this no and we need to uh, you can say promote the no blame zone uh, culture through fun way second part when we move forward that you know how uh, to come out of it, what is the alternative to blaming? That is failing intelligently. It means you don't want to get people failed, rather, you know, you have something, you ask people, okay, you know what is the consequences if you do, you are doing this thing and what will going to, what would the action? Secondly, maybe you can get them engaged. You can say, okay, do you have any solution to it? We can work on that and we'll see how it goes. And thirdly, you want ways that, you know, all those problems should not recur. It should not repeat again and again. Otherwise, your, you will not able to achieve what you wanted to achieve. So in other words, if you see, uh, you want a culture where you can promote people, you can, uh, you know, make people successful and to be a good leader, you want, let's say, for example, if you see hero is want who don't want to make any mistake. He want to be successful. He want to be objective uh, driven and lizard way, which is Jack. He is like, oh, you know, this working environment stressed out. I don't want to work this guy. I don't want to work in this environment. And he was always blaming and he was like, ah, oh, what to do? Mary, she is, she has her own opinion. So we don't want to be, once you start, you know, developing people, you start, educating people all about this, you will definitely will be less lizard. You will be less merry and more of a hero because you are an inclusive man. You are become a good leader. You want people to be successful. You want to achieve something. So this is how, you know, uh, this hero, he found this armor of insight. Armor of insight is like, you know, he is aware of a lot of things. He is aware of the no blame zone. He is aware of four insanities. He said, okay, I'm going to deal with that. And all the problem is not, it, it will going to be tackled very easily. So move on to the next part. And there we're going to discuss about 
some encoded assumptions. If you see, look at this maze and just quickly, you have 20 seconds, all of you. Uh, you have to start from here at the bottom. You can see uh, the Rama and you have to reach here. So just 20 seconds, just let me know uh, who's going to reach first. Your time starts now. Your time is going on, on and on. Whoever reached first, just let me know. Okay, that's it. Yes, Ahmed. I got stuck near the top. <laughs> okay. What about you, Vishnu? Just seventy-five percent. I could. Sorry. 75% uh, reached there, but no, I couldn't end. Right. What about you, Katrina? Well, I started from the top and you can see there's an obstacle. There's no way that you can reach it. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> what <laughs> happened? You know why? Because this is, here we're going to discuss about encoded assumptions. What are encoded assumptions actually? Encoded assumptions are, you know, it, it, these are the things which we are looking at things since our childhood, okay? We think, we believe, you know, we can reach, maybe I'll go this way and I'll go that. And, you know, this is our encoded assumption. This is the way we are doing things since our childhood. But once you know your encoded assumptions, then maybe you said, okay, no, rather than going this way, I can go from out this way as well. Oh, look, I can reach to the hair top as well, right? So these are our encoded assumptions. And here, what happened is uh, with your encoded assumptions, your uh, rule of engagement activated. Rule of engagement is what? For example, there's a war going on and normally it's in war situations, this rule of engagement, you know, someone is attacking, how you're going to tackle it. So here what happened is, it, our encoded assumption, we have to go within this maze. But actually, you can go out of that maze as well. I mean, you can go said, okay, I'm going to reach from here. Simple as that. So your rule of engagement is stopping you from going there. Any point? So this is, this is very, uh, you can say, uh, interesting topic when you are, you know, uh, when your encoded assumptions stops you, you will become more lizard. Lizard is more of a jack who is a villain. Because your encoded assumptions, no, 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 it, you cannot go beyond because this is only way. And you start thinking, oh, okay, I should not go there. And then you are able to do the So once, you know, we'll break all those things and then we can reach out of those things. So you will be less lizard and you will be more hero and you will achieve your target as such. So this is actually uh, about a little bit of encoded assumption, how our encoded assumption stops us. Okay. And this is such an obvious thing why people cannot get it because of his negative brain, his lizard brain, which is stopping you, which is activating your role of engagement. And this actually it's happened and it is very generic. So uh, let's move on uh, to the next part, which is about I'm quickly talking about like our brain, how you know what the of cognitive brain, which is like you know the brain mass, which is 80%, limbic is 10%, and reptilian is 10%. It's like all the thinking different patterns. So I'm not gonna get so much detail in that. I don't know how it works because uh, it is uh, totally it's a, it's a long uh, subject. So <clears throat> let's move on uh, to the next part. The hero Rama, he reached to uh, almost the final destination, which is uh, achieving the objective and one step ahead. And he saw the helmet of victory. Yes, the helmet of victory. He wanted that was one. How about that one? This is, again, he saw this is a circle of tolerance for everything, you know, if your circle of tolerance is, you know, if your encoded assumptions are, you know, more, definitely your circle of tolerance will be very small. Similarly, because, you know, your encoded assumption is stopping you doing something and you cannot violate. If you start violating, it will stop you. So your tolerance level will become very small. Once you have come out of your encoded assumption, believe me, your circle of tolerance will be so big and you will start realizing things in a totally different way. Your approach will going to be totally different. You will gonna tackle those things in much intelligent way, in a much smarter way. And definitely you can, you know, set aside all those problems, all those obstacles. <clears throat> and once you increase your circle of tolerance, you will believe you will 
intelligently you will start acting more intelligently to achieve uh, uh, your uh, you know objective so you tend to achieve uh, uh, it more in a more uh, positive way because lower the circle it will kill you it will kill your purpose believe me you won't be able to achieve whatever you wanted to achieve so <clears throat> let's move on to the next part which is the final destination and that is here he has to deal with the lizard lizard is actually the bigger problem you now we talk about hero now rama he'll become a superhero ta 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 yes superhero means he got sort of on, uh, sort of focus he got you know this victory of helmet of victory he has got the suit of insight the armor of insight and with all those things with all those tools now he can really able to deal with any bigger problem any problem it comes to him he will gonna face it he will going to deal with it in a successful way be it in a professional life as i told you in your personal life be aware of all you would you learn about insanities you learned about circle of tolerance you learned about encoded assumptions okay you said okay no blame zone so these things if you, if you came across you will literally find out you know, how these things are affecting your relationships and once you remove all those things or or maybe you are aware of all those things in your relationships believe me it will going to be a successful and healthy uh, life be it professional or personal so this is it for uh, the this thing uh, the heroes way now i'll discuss about the colored brain the colored brain is about how our brain getting clarity so before starting again the three characters are there this is a very di a different topic i'm going to quickly show you uh, first i'm going to show you uh, some arrows and you need to tell me which one is dark okay? which one is dark so you broke up can you repeat that yeah which which arrow is dark the bottom one gray bottom one right now i'm okay. going to yeah i'm going to show you this bottom one in a different color right so it is kind of a blue you can see okay now the bottom one is dark again yeah right lastly now okay here we go now which one is dark top one exactly dark one exactly so you know what i showed you the same thing but with different colored glasses you know what normally what happens is how uh, it is actually colored brain is about the genetic foundation genetic foundation of our brain how it gets clarity and getting clarity through different colored of glasses is totally different this exercise was done in a group actually and in both the groups there are like five or six people and they were distributed with some sort of colored glasses mix of colored glasses right and they were being told which one it arrow is dark you have to follow that one the exercise started and within one team someone is going right someone is going left and there was a total i mean it was people are saying oh no no this is the right way no 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 this is the right way said and someone people like mary she said okay there are more people who i go so you can find different sort of people reacting in totally a uh, different way because of their colored glasses no one is right or wrong because they are looking things in a certain way similarly to uh, look at your team for example okay and then you see realize why they are going this way reason because they are the headed cause of their perception and you being a leader you said okay you are right but let's try this one out because you know the right color i mean you the uh, uh, darker one Uh, because you, you have you being a leader you seen it without glasses you can guide them properly but to give them feedback is really very important you know you, you may be like this but why not we try this one but this way you actually uh, have the how to come out of that uh, situation to come out of uh, that particular uh, scenario so similarly uh, i'll give you another example you might have heard about intel and motorola right one is for mac and one is for pc and our brain 
our brain is also hardwired, right? And let's say, for example, uh, behaviors, our behaviors are like softwares, right? And these are hardware. So software, maybe some software is compatible with Motorola and some softwares are compatible with Intel. So you cannot say, oh, this is the software should work in both things at times. So it's all compatibility. It's how our brain is compatible with and how our brain is actually, you know, reacting to certain things. So this is uh, uh, what you call uh, the brain process. And then uh, we, beyond that, we, we, we take a lot of uh, actions. For example, I'll give you a quick one. We are sitting in a class, okay. We find a lot of people who are really good at it. We said, okay, yeah, he, he is such a person. He, he, he just studied maybe two or three days a week and he got first prize. He, he got so first. And I'm like, so many of us, I'm able to even score uh, 70%. The reason I did, you know, that maybe the teacher who is teaching actually, he is teaching you, he might be a different color person. Maybe, let's say, for example, he is a green brain person. He is teaching in a green way. He is teaching in a green way. He is delivering lectures in a green way. And he is checking uh, the test in a green way. Similarly, the student who will, he is also a green per boy. He also, he understands very easily all about the paper, all about the lectures, all about the test and the marking. And he stood excellent. I maybe am a red brain. I don't, maybe I mightn't be compatible with that style. So I definitely will going to be failed because my perception, my looking at things is totally different because it is not compatible with my style. So that is how, you know, we, we, we see, we observe these behaviors like in our, uh, uh, normally, you know, in school life, we have seen a lot of things. This is all about the, uh, actually, before it was how this brain thing works. So now I'm going to quickly uh, go through about all the brain colors. So first, you can see there's a concert going on and everyone was like jamming in and everyone was like enjoying everything. So the first character you see, there's a guitarist and he's like, da, 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 and he's like enjoying and he's doing a lot of stuff and he's in his own. He said, okay, whatever is going on, let's play my guitar and, uh, and let me enjoy. And his process actually, he is a green brain person. And who are a green brain person? Green brain person actually, we call it a uh, chaotic processing. What is, what is meant by chaotic processing? In his brain, again, we are discussing about colored brain and how our brain gets clarity. So this is, I'm explaining you how green brain uh, gets clarity. He is chaotic processing. Nothing is connected actually. It's like, you know, he said, okay, let's have this beat. Let's me, let me change the other beat. Oh, it's not working. Let's do something else. So he is changing things very quickly. He wants, you know, he, he said, okay, we want to have this song. These kind of people normally have fuzzy picture of the objective. And they, once they know, they start doing something. And to get clarity, they need feedback. They need immediate feedback. feedback. Okay, your boss said, okay, do this thing before knowing into much detail, they jump into the, they, they try to reach to the conclusion that you're, oh, I'm going to do this in this way. And this is why things don't get, uh, you know, at times uh, people said, oh, he's too far. Maybe he don't want to listen to the processes. And, you know, there, there will be a conflict situation. So, uh, but the good part about green brain people is they recover very quickly. If they make any mistake, they are so quick that other people don't realize that, you know, he, he makes a mistake and he come out of it and he got another option. And then it is uh, for other brains, it is like, you know, they cannot even realize how quickly he came out of those problems. So look at his process, how his brain is, uh, you know, getting the clarity. First, he needs little information. Then he get information, start action, 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 action. action. Then he started analyzing, okay, maybe if it won't work, he will take more information. He said, okay, let me have more information. Then he take action, then he take analyze. So you, you can see there is no, I mean, there is no flow actually. He is taking on ad hoc basis, but believe me, these kind of people at times come up with very, very good uh, options or results. They are so good at it. So these are the characteristics of uh, green uh, brain people. Similarly, move on to the next person who is actually who's playing a saxophone 
and he was like you know he was in his way he was like you know quite into it enjoying and having fun so he because something you know he know what to press how to press because he has a notebook and he looking into those things and he is following all those steps which actually uh, are there so these kind of uh, people are uh, purple brain purple brain are, are called relational people who are relational people these actually uh, in in their mind everything is connected and when everything is connected they they get more clarity and before going into any venture before going into any assignment they want to have lots and lots of information they said okay i need to know about everything before going in if you if you are a purple brain and i said okay you don't need to do something and i give you little information you will get frustrated you said oh why why is saying this way i'm not going to do this way if you are a green brain and your boss is purple brain who needs lot of information and he said okay uh vishnu you need to do this thing then you know in this way and you start thinking oh why he so he detailing give, he give me so much detail and you said okay boss i'll do it but he is a purple brain he want lot of detail and after two days you said oh this is what i did and you presented it to your boss and he said what what have you done i don't want this and he said well, i did lot of efforts and I, this is this is what my work is but what you are doing you are doing it in a green way you are concise you said okay this is but me being a purple i need some details to understand to get more clarity and this is how it there is a conflict situation because you don't know my career i don't know your career and then there will be a big disconnect and when there is a big disconnect it means you will be in trouble or vice versa and you maybe you will be disengaged or you start feeling that you know this place sucks actually i don't want to work in such an environment why i am wasting my time so this is one of the reason you know people get into disputes people get into conflicts without knowing what's how this person is getting clarity so for purple brain once he have got lot of information okay he said okay i have not lot of information he must have options he said okay if option a doesn't work i'll work on option b or option c so he has got a lot of options available so that he will be successful he creates system he wants system to be in place he said okay uh, this way i'm going to do this and everything is like you know he must know how to but for purple men people it is very difficult for them to delegate they don't delegate they don't want to delegate because they are the one who knows everything so normally they are being misunderstood as insensitive people because of their you know clarity process they are ambiguously process and they are being misunderstood by a lot of people and usually they take a lot of time to make decisions because they are spending a lot of time on information and options so this is kind of you can say a purple brain person next we'll move on uh to a red brain red brain he is you know look at him he is a piano person he is playing piano and again in piano you need to be very much synchronized you need to know how and what to press at what time otherwise the beat will gone mad it, it may be the guitar one the green person he was like playing anything and it will adjust within the music right but this person who is red brain how he gets clarity he is more linear processing and he looks for structures for example he said okay if i am working in somewhere i said okay i need to do this first and then second and then third and then fourth and this is going to be my process flow and how i'm going to do objectives i'm going to achieve objectives and this is the right workflow and you know and before proceeding anything they analyze data a lot they are good at analysis so that they can make they get more clarity so analysis for them is very important they look for logics if there is no logic this believe me if the red person he will not going to proceed he will not going to move forward and that again if you don't know red person there will be big conflicts they will be you being a leader will be in trouble that you know why he is so disengaged why he is affecting environment so this is kind of you can say uh 
red brain person and what happened with them is uh, they make less mistakes but when they make mistakes you know it was really difficult for them to come out of it very easily because they don't have any options like purple brain they, they need to look into the process like you know what, what happened what was what what wrong at which end then they need to redo all those things and at times they being mis misunderstood as you know they are delaying a lot of things but this is their way of doing things and once this perception come up and you don't know definitely those perceptions are killing you you're killing your relationships be it professional or personal it is killing your relationships as well so these kind of people as see they need information 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 then lot of analysis they want to analyze each and every bit they want to have all those structure in place before going into action otherwise they will never go into action you might have uh, experienced such of kind of people in your organizations as well so uh, these are the three peop uh, brain people and the last one is a person who is singer singer you know she is like in her own way she is enjoying she is into the environment the people around her and she is like she, she was like in her own way she was feeling the you know in that concert if you see she was feeling everything okay wow there are a lot of people wow i love it oh, and you will get more engaged you will get more motivated you will be more insightful of your surrounding everything is connected through environment because these kind of people they need lots of information to get clarity they want details at time and they are actually are called intuitive processing and uh, based on their subconscious they do a lot of things based on their subconscious as well and uh, at times you know they take people's problems as their own problem this is kind of a you can say a drawback for them but this is uh, what happened with blue brain people but they are very good at multitasking they do a lot of things so uh, these people usually take long to make decisions they are more connected with people as well and you can say they are more empathetic as well <clears throat> and they are misunderstood as in, as insensitive otherwise it doesn't mean that you know they are uh, they said oh there are people i mean they connected with everyone through their emotions you can there's an environment so this is their way of doing things if again now we have all the brain colors in front of us the green red purple and blue everybody's getting clarity process is totally different and when in one team if you see there are totally different brain processes right so what happen <clears throat> as uh, they start doing things in their own way and people start you know uh, realizing that you know this is not going to work and uh, if they don't know each other better so uh, let's move on uh, to the next part of the story when where rama who was the hero he got those rainbow glasses rainbow glasses means every color every color is in that rainbow color glasses and he said okay now i have got the rainbow color glasses he can see things in a totally different way rainbow color means he knows red color pain he knows green color clarity he knows the blue color clarity he knows purple color clarity so being a leader being a successful leader you should know being a successful partner being a successful Uh, to be in a relationship if you know the brain colors of your partner your professional life your personal life it will help you be successful how i'm going to show you this is a genetic foundation you know we cannot change because it's for easier for us because you know once we know about brain colors once we know about all those uh, traits of people how they are thinking as we last learned you know this is the that you know your circle of tolerance will be broader definitely you will start accepting a lot of things and you will tend to accept a lot of things you can even if your your encoded assumptions get violated as we discussed earlier that you know if your encoded assumptions got violated you will react but once your encoded assumptions you know your circle of tolerance is so big that you said okay yeah yeah okay he is doing in his way this is his working style this is his brain getting clarity so you will accept it more and you will without keeping any sort of perception without keeping any sort of picture in your own mind 
he said, okay, yeah, this is the way it's supposed to do. And then he said, okay, yep, this will become uh, a healthier relationship between you and your uh, partner, in fact. So knowing your own color helps you managing your own ex expectations and you redefine that actually affects you, right? You, you know, I know, okay, if I know my brain color, I will tend to act in that way. But similarly, once I know the brain color of other people, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm a boss, I'm a leader. I know, okay, this guy, how I have to assign this person, how he can be good at work, how he can be more engaged. So what you're going you're to do, you to make him more successful, to make him set for the success, you will understand him and you will want him to be uh, the hero, to be, uh, to be able to achieve whatever is being assigned to that particular person. So these are the things which really want us, uh, you know, to being a leader, it's very important for us to understand people, to understand their perceptions, how they are doing things and let them be successful. So let's move on to the next part, creating an environment for success. You know, you can see there are a lot of people working in one project, right? And down the line, you see there are two people. One is person who is a purple brain, other one is red brain. The red brain says, oh, how can we analyze this? We just need important facts because they don't want uh, too many details. The other person said, no, 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 it's not possible without, you know, options. The purple one want a lot of options. So there is a conflict situation. Both supervisors said, no, 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 do this in this way. He said, no, 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 I don't want this way. Do it in this way. So there is a conflict. Similarly, another person, ah, this green, oh, you know, we need to reach the deadline and we have to do it something this way and that way. And he's complaining the other person who is actually a blue brain person who is more insensitive to environment he said no no no. we mean we need to make people feel better as well because he's more of a feeler he's like you know into people he's empathetic but again both people mindset is totally different and then creates problem and you cannot able to achieve you cannot able to achieve your objective because conflict is there because everybody is right in their own way and this happened in our own life professionally or personally that you know we said no no, no i'm right no 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 he said no i'm right and ultimately, maybe you both are right, but the way you are looking at things are totally different. The way you are looking in is in your own colored glass. The other person, he is looking thing in his own colored glass. But once we know each other, each other colored, colored brains, believe me, it will going to be a highly engaged team. It will going to achieve milestones. It will going to achieve a lot of objectives which you set for yourself, for your team. So, Let's move on to the next part where you can see there's a lizard is there. The lizard is always uh, why they're like doing this. Why I don't, you know, he's always a complaining person. I don't like and why they want to work with each other. And I don't want to see other person, person glasses. This is my way. I do things in my own way. Look at the hero. He's got great insights. Okay. He's got colored brain glasses, rainbow colored glade. And you see there are people behind down you can see a, a blue brain person and a red brain person okay one person say no no i'm right other person say, no 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 i'm right and both are like fighting he said okay switch your glasses and you can see the blue person is wearing now red glasses the red person is wearing blue glasses and now they both are like interacting in such an ideal environment you want them to be successful because now they can see things in their not on, only in their own way, but the other person's way as well, because now things are much more clear. The circle of tolerance is high. There will be no blame zone because they're not going to blame them because of their way of looking at things. They don't want, okay, no, 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 you're, it's not like that. It is like this. So it's totally different. So you're in, you already passed your encoded assumptions. You said, okay, now I can see things in a totally different way. And that will enable you to develop a very successful team. So uh, quickly, we'll go through this, the effects of uh, <clears throat> uh, your brain psychology uh, awareness on personal and organizational effectiveness. Right. 
so uh, if you see we uh, we talked about uh, awarenesses we talked about how uh, we we you know we get clarity influences and what is influence you know uh, what is our awareness level and what is what we don't aware of and how is awareness and non awareness affecting uh, the way we are doing things <clears throat> so you see there are a lot of influences influences by uh, you can say uh, by the environment there are some genetic influences there are some personal realities so environment influences are what you tend to see things maybe uh, you know you 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 are with your parents for example okay or maybe at your school you learn something that is a different environment with your friends with media you you are learning something the culture you are in at the workplace so there are lots and lots of influences uh, in your life which actually uh, in a way is uh, is affecting you and if you are uh, not aware what happened it along with other people when you when you are not aware what will happen that you are not uh, you, you are being influenced it will going to affect your you know uh, way of doing things you will start <coughs> getting frustrated okay and you are not aware of all those perceptions what happen you will lack clarity there will be more of a conflict situation and people start you know they miss start misconception about you so this is the effect of unawareness similarly when all this is going to happen it will tend to, you will tend to become underperformer in in such an environment where you, there is no awareness right and once you are an underperformer you will become you know we discuss about the environment and who is a common denominator you are the common denominator and if you are an underperformer what you are affecting you are affecting the whole environment you you are, you are yourself stressed up you will be low on motivation you will be not aligned with the business and definitely it will have a low productivity you will be you are not going to achieve what you wanted to achieve and negative impact it will would happen it is a negative impact on uh, the overall environment you will actually polluting the whole environment because you are not aware similarly you are aware that okay i know my you know the genetic awareness you have you got you know you have got the understanding of the colored brain you got understanding of other people colored glasses you are understanding you you know the your focus you know the uh, how we learn about sort of focus how focus is actually affected how our ra is going to you know help us in achieving certain things you know that encoded assumptions that you know now if i'm going to do this thing it will not going to help me out i have to go because your circle of tolerance is high and your acceptability will be high similarly in your colored brain your circle of tolerance becomes so high that you know you start accepting a lot of things and that will help you enable you to be successful similarly there are some environmental awarenesses as well and those environmental awarenesses comes from certain values which you possess or certain things which you are being maybe you are brought up with certain things maybe in such an environment that is uh, uh, actually uh, help you in uh, understanding uh, about your values the cultural compliances where you brought up with which culture you are in how how are you taking those awarenesses within your own personality and the emotional drive emotional drive we'll discuss later in detail in the next uh, uh, topic but emotional drive is how you're going to do these things i mean you know how are brain gets clarity but the emotional drive is actually it is uh, your primary motivators what what are your primary motivators to do certain things because you now you are aware you know, you are aware of your emotional drive as well and what is motivating you what are your primary motivators and how it get changes with the passage of time so again it's all depending upon your awareness and once you are aware on that part there are some genetic awareness as well you know at times you said genetic awareness are there in your brain i mean you for example your optimism optimism is you know you are very much optimistic you said whatever the scenario is 
I am optimistic. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it will going to be good. Everything is right, and everything is good. So you are so much positive. Colored brain, definitely. Your this is your genetic way. As we discuss, it's ambiguity relief process. How do you get clarity? So again, colored brain. You you know, okay, this is going to happen, and this is how it is going to work actually. And the third one is risk adversity. Environment is as such that you know that environments that okay, you can take risk. But you are a type of person that you don't want to take risk. You will not go to take risk. Or maybe there is an environment where it said no, you're not supposed to take risk. But your genetic condition is you know I want to take risk. But again, so that is actually stopping you. So this is all genetic. You cannot do anything because that is genetically built in your software. So now you have got high awareness, right? If you have got high awareness. Your your more interpersonal uh, agility will be high. Definitely, uh, your identity within groups will be high because you know people start thinking that you know his awareness level is so high. He understand his family. He understand his superiors. He understand his workplaces. He understand how things are going on. How people are getting clarities. Okay, your core identity. Your your more emotionally agility will be high, and you start. looking things in a totally different way and then you start collaborating with people and when you start you know all these things you will going to apply all those in strategy and you once what your strategy is what definitely once you are aware all of those things definitely you will be less frustrated you will be more motivated there will be less miscommunication there will be more clarity and you will be self directed okay yes i know what to do how to do and when to do with with whom to do actually and you will be a self leader you said okay yes i can do it and i am going to lead it and i am going to reach to the final destination and definitely you will be self influenced and in turn what will happen your motivation level is so high you you will be aligned with whatever the objectives are you will align with the organization you will be high in productivity and once you will be high in productivity it will going to affect the organization and you will become a leader a change leader because you are happy you are fulfilled you are good as a leader and want other people to be successful so in other words it has a positive effects on your own self with people around you professionally personally and the environment as we discussed in our first module that environment you are all around the environment you are acting and reacting now we have got all those awarenesses with us we know the insanities we know the blaming culture we know the colored people how people are affecting now what we going to react is definitely is going to be totally different now we have got the awareness now we got the knowledge how people are getting the clarity so that there will be less conflict there will be more teamwork you can have more synergy and you can able to achieve bigger objectives so uh, this is it uh, for one you know what i'll i'll ask you one thing okay for teamwork what do you think which team is uh, better there is a red team and there is you can do the lizard team yes amit what do you think well with the the more players uh you got more coverage so probability wise the team at the top because okay. they got more players what about you katrina what do you think hi sorry which team uh, you think is much more successful this one or the this one this one hmm well i don't know like you know this one they look like the one down when they are like high fiving they look like they have a really good connection but maybe this people already like know what they're doing so now they are just say okay let's do it maybe yes. they have that conversation <laughs> that's true that true you know what happened you see uh, amit you see the team the lizard team lizard team is like ah look now what happened is he said why didn't you stop the ball the other one said no 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 that is your job the third one said no what is wrong with these guys other one no no you are supposed to do it it's a blame yeah. culture okay i, I didn't see that i didn't see that initially <laughs> yeah 
So what happened? They start blaming each other. No, no, no. It's so even there is a blame culture. There is no trust. There is no clarity. What will happen? Definitely, this team will going. There will be no goals. I mean, everyone is passing the ball on their own. I mean, shifting the you can say the monkey to, to someone else. What happened? No alignment. No engagement. No teamwork. Definitely, this team will going to uh, you know lose in any case. If you see this, these team. I don't. I only see three people there, though. You no, know, there are four people actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these four people, you can see there are four different colored brain people, and everybody knows the other color. They are with the rainbow glasses, right? So in that case, suppose if I'm a green person, I'm going to give you a pass in a green way, and you are a red person. You now understand how this green uh, way of passing is. You will take that pass very effectively. Right, so yeah, because they've got their own independent roles now, exactly, right? Exactly, so independent not... roles and understanding of each other. That is, you know, the main thing is the understanding of everyone. You know, now I know how this person react, so I will be more aligned. I will be more successful. So this is how actually, you know, uh, team works uh, flourish and how they will be successful. So after knowing all these things, what will happen? You know, you see this big lizard now. And this, the four heroes, they are coming in. This bigger problem is going to be crushed now. He will say, okay, whatever the problem, we all going to successful, we're all going to tackle it, we're going to achieve our objective. So this is how, you know, once you have mix of team with this kind of synergy, you will achieve your objective in a very smart way, whatever the problem would be. So this is it about... Uh, uh, the colored brain thing. If you have any question as of now, you may ask me in, uh, regarding the last two modules, and then we'll quickly move on to the emotional drive, which is a shorter subject. So, if you guys have any question, any clarity, you may ask me now. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, what about you, Vishnu? Yeah, all good. Katrina? Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> right. Okay. You know what? Uh, actually, uh, you, we can, we, we experience all these things in our, like, uh, in lives, actually. And this uh, affects our performances at any, you can say, uh, setup. And, and uh, you know, normally, uh, it's like people think, you know, it's only professional or something like that. It's not like that. Believe me, you, you run this test with your partner, with your husband, with your wife, whatever. You will, believe me, you will, once you come to know about their, how their brain gets clarity, you can feel that different. You, they, you can avoid a lot of conflicts as such, right? So uh, let's move on uh, to the next part, uh, which is about <coughs> uh, emotional rights. And uh, let's see how what are actually emotional drives are, and uh, how it affects uh, our relationships. So uh, first, I'll give you a little idea. Normally, in colored brain, where we learn it is genetic foundation of gen clarity, right? And that you know what, the colored brain will remain same since your you know once you you know got birth, you you're from your childhood till you die. It will remain same throughout. It will remain same. On the other hand, if you see uh, about uh, emotional drives, they tend to get changed with the passage of time. So, okay, uh, I'll do quick, a little quick exercise with you guys. Okay, I'm pasting the link uh, on uh, chat. Okay, what you need to do, go to this, go to that link. It's called uh, cbccards.card. Can you see that one? Yeah. Okay, just click that one. Okay. Let me see. Can you see any screen? I mean, uh, did you able to open it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Now what you're supposed to do is I'll let me open my cards and then I'll tell you what to do. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to share my screen first.
okay uh, now you can see these cards right i'll uh, okay what you are supposed to do just select five cards okay uh -huh. right and do one thing do uh, let's say you need to uh, drag it here for example and uh, select based on one condition for example uh, you have got maybe 10 million dollars right and you need to spend it okay select five cards that actually helps you uh, to mention okay why you selected those cards and what you're going to do with those 10 million dollars right so quickly select five cards there you can move it forward further ahead you know you can go on to next page as well so there are a lot of cards just quickly select five cards and based on that thing that you have got 10 million dollars and you what you're going to do with those 10 million dollars so i need your explanation why you chose those card and uh, what's the reason behind it you can go ahead quick you have like maybe one to two minutes maximum <sighs> Do it on your screens, okay? Well, I'm on my mobile phone and uh, I'm unable to move. Okay, you can tell me later on which card you want to select. So okay. Why you want to select, you let me know as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Sorry? I'm done. Okay, let me wait for other people and then we'll... I'm done as well. Okay. Uh, Katrina, can you share your screen? Yes. Okay, let me give you access. Okay, share your screen. All right, can okay. you guys see it? Yeah, now explain. Now you got five million or ten million dollars, okay. and so why <laughs> you selected these cars, and okay. what are you going to do so, with it? Of course, I'm going to buy a house that has a pool. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to uh, start my own like non-for-profit and charity organization. I'm going to support people help them, you know, like whatever they need, find employment, uh, train them. So this is kind of like a teamwork. I'm going to build a company and then I'm going to be a motivational speaker. You see Superman helping people. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's me here working, having breakfast and also leading a team. Okay, good. Right. Right. So thank you for sharing your screen now. No uh, I'll go one by one. And uh, Vishnu, can you share your screen? Yeah. Yep, please. So here first is I'm going to buy this uh, lighthouse by spending that money. Then I'm going to take a shoot, a produce a movie uh, with the Superman stuff. Okay. Then I'm going to buy this mansion, uh, rather converting into a resort. Okay. Then you have the, I'm going to start an automobile industry where I will manufacture hybrid cars. Okay. And finally, I will buy a desert island. Wow. Cool. Right. Amit, thank you for sharing your screen. <laughs> I wish I could share it. No, no. Uh, okay. Can you stop sharing, uh, Vishnu? Yeah. Amit, uh, I can help you out here. Okay. Which card do you want to select? So I'm going to select the guy in the swimming pool doing uh, his phone conversation with a laptop. Okay. So I like to be on the laptop quite a bit, so that's me. Mm -hmm. um, I would also look at the f person with the Superman t-shirt. Okay. Because ten million dollars or pounds or whatever currency it is, you know, gives you a lot of options. So, mm -hmm. you know, that makes me feel like I've got something of incredible value, mm -hmm. and now I need to think about what I'm going to do with it. So, the third card would be uh, the team building exercise where these uh, people are climbing on top of each other, mm -hmm. right? And then the the one with the cogs, because I'm going to continuously be thinking about creating a new system, you know, a helpful system to benefit somebody else. Okay. For or even an organization. Okay. That's for tracking. Enough. Is that four already, right? Yeah, one more. 
And uh, the, I'll choose the last one, the, the one with the expression. This one? Or this the one? The final one, yeah, the, the last one, the, the person with that look on his face. Okay. Because, you know, potentially you could have reached your objectives with maybe less than 10 million. But then you're going to wonder what you're going to do with the rest of the, the money that you've got. Are you going to save it? Like you may want to think about your next move. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you uh, for sharing your part of uh, these cards, actually. Now I'm going to explain you quickly what these cards actually meant for. Like I'll start with the Amit. Okay. He wants this. He has got 10 million and he said, okay, I'm going to. I am going to work from home and uh, I, I got superpower. You know, he, he want the Superman thing and Superman thing. Uh, he said, uh, you know, I've got a lot of things to do. I'm going to achieve these things. He, and what this team working, he wants to work with team. Definitely wanted to uh, work with that team to build something. Fourth one, uh, he want to develop some systems as well, right, uh, Amit? That's right, yes. And that system is for your own company or what, what exactly for that? Well, it could be for a non-profit organization, some, somebody that doesn't have a system in place okay. that needs a system and to help them develop it. And the last one is what you're supposed to do next. Because you, they yeah. have, you have something in your mind. So uh, from these cards, what I feel your emotional drives are, uh, uh, you are like, you have got emotional drive for diversity and change, right? Then you have got emotional drive for growth and uh, challenge you want to because you want to grow as well you want to achieve something with teamwork you have got emotional drive for love and belonging and the last one your emotional drive your primary motivator i'm telling you is about responsibility and contribution as well so i'm going to explain in detail but just keep these four emotional drive which i mentioned here and how actually you can relate yourself later on once sure. i'll explain right similarly uh, now, uh, now I'll come to uh, Vishnu. Vishnu, can you again can you uh, share your screen? Yeah. Share your screen, Vishnu. Okay. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you said you you, you want to buy a, a lighthouse first. Yeah. And you said I'm going to buy a villa to make it a resort. So actually, mm -hmm. uh, what from here, uh, what I see is your emotional drive for uh, significance is very high. You want to, you know, want to uh, show your, I mean, uh, uh, Significance uh, is very important for you. You want to invest a lot of money so that you can have your own business. So your emotional drive for security and control is also is one of your primary motivator. Team working definitely. Uh, you want to work with team. It is it is a, you can say it's a emotional drive for love and belonging because you you want to work with people, and definitely. Uh, growth and challenge is very much visible. So these are the four emotional drives which I have seen here in, in, in your, uh, through your cards. I'm going to explain you how and why it is your primary motivators. And if okay. you could, yeah. Uh, Katrina, can you share yours finally so that we can quickly go through and then I'll explain. Yep. All right. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Yep. Yeah. So you said, okay, you're going to buy a house, which is fair enough. You said, okay, I'm not gonna, I mean, it was just a house and this, which fair enough. Then you said, okay, I need to work with people. I need to work for people and to contribute uh, to some, you know, uh, on some nonprofit organization where you, you said, I'm gonna work from home. So you want, your primary motivator is, uh, your primary emotional drive is responsibility and contribution first, okay? Second one, which I see is love and belonging. Third one is security and control because you know you want to have some house. It's not for your significance as such, but that is for your. You said okay, I want to have a house, and I want you know you want to uh, you want to build something. But that is for your own security actually. It is not for significance purpose, but that is for your security. And then 
uh, you said uh, uh, this one is uh, the this thing uh, the people uh, this one is for what uh, the people on the right uh, bottom yeah this one here yeah yeah so it's actually kind of like i see it as a leader somebody who is leading these people uh, like because they are like in the middle in the desert right that's yeah. how i see it. i saw right. it so here you can see uh, the emotional drive for achievement as well because you, you you want to take people along with you to achieve certain things so these are the four emotional drives which actually which revolves around those cards so you can stop sharing <clears throat> So in short, um, now I'm going to take you how, how emotional drive works and why, uh, why I selected those emotional drives uh, for you guys. So let me share my screen to move further ahead. Once you see my screen, just let me know. Okay. Look, can you see the screen now? Yep. Perfect. So uh, here, again, you see the three characters, which is Rama, the hero, the Jack is always there, and the Mary. So the drama was like, uh, he went to Egypt to see, to understand why this pyramid was, you know, it was uh, not able to, they were not able to complete this pyramid. And he was studying a lot of things and he think you know how to know about it and how what to do and then you know he was watching the, the back to the future and he said okay let's develop a time machine and he somehow he developed time machine and said okay let's travel back to time and jack was saying oh, are you gone nuts what is what's wrong with this guy he's going to travel back to the time but rama being a hero he wanted to know the reason behind it why it was not completed what went wrong and he finally got to the time machine and then they reached back to the not the future rather back to the past and there they met the coordinator the coordinator his name is tap tap and the coordinator he said okay you are here now i'm going to take you to the tour to the places what went wrong why it went wrong and then you can have a look at it and then they said okay we are ready and they are like in their own dresses and all that of old style and then they said okay let's move forward there rama saw a person who was stone carving and he they saw the story of peru kufa's idea peru kufa's idea actually uh, peru kufa he wanted to build uh, a pyramid because his father's pyramid was not able to, he was not able to complete that pyramid. He wanted to build a pyramid so that people should know, he wanted to have the legacy that, you know, it was built by Peru of Kufa and, you know, he wanted to be known maybe after thousands of years that, you know, it was built by Peru of Kufa. So he wanted something to be there which will stay for long. And in that story, what happened is, uh, Peru wanted this thing done. Normally, let's say, for example, at that time, there was like uh, people who are building those pyramids. Normally, we think build, pyramids were being built by slaves. Normally, like, you know, in Hollywood movies, we see, okay, uh, you know, in like Ten Commandments and all those, you know, people are like, there are people who are like, you know, uh, lynching people and they say oh no do it and that so this is like this is again encoded assumption that you know we think it's being built by slaves but it's not the case it's being built by Egyptian people and definitely at that time there are different levels of uh, people living in one community there are highly rich people there are poor people they are like laborers so he thought okay to build a legacy I need something which has got, uh, which can able, you know, which can enable uh, him to be successful. So he said, okay, let's call a board meeting. And that, even at that time, in ancient Egypt time, there was a board meeting call. The HR head was there, the chief strategy officer was there, the CFO was there, everyone was there. And Peru Kufa, he said, okay, I want to build this one. I want to achieve this thing. How we can do it? So everybody gets those ideas. A strategy guy said, okay, boss, can we do this? Can we do that? And we know. HR said, okay, we can do this. We can pay them this much and we want them to be motivated. And CFO, as usual, you know, they said, oh, oh this so much cost. We cannot do this. We, we don't want this one. And Peru Kufa came with an idea. And, you know, at that time, he said, okay, 
there was certain dishes dishes in a way that um, uh, they said only the rich people can eat uh, clover fed beef and he said why don't we you know fed all those laborers with this clover fed beef so the cfo was like oh no it will cost us so much but the ceo the part of kufa said no this is my order we're going to do this we're going to fed them with these as clover uh, clover fed beef and it was final and that board meeting concludes what happened is what's the idea behind it you know what when people at a lower level they said even if you pay them wages they are happy but giving them such a meal which they never thought of it and which actually enables them to think some other way around it you know we are being fed in such a way which we never thought of so their emotional drive actually their motivator they will they will become so highly motivated they said okay we're going to achieve it and they are being respected in such a way it is kind of a respect for them that they are being fed in such a way so they said okay we're going to achieve it they are being treated in such a way that they said we're going to achieve it at any cost so this is the idea of the of kufu and then the same story happened the tap tap said okay let's me take you to the site where this pyramid is being you know they have started building the pyramid and all the three characters then reached to the pyramid site and they saw what they saw people working at a ground level at a lower level and what uh, actually uh, they are doing is uh, they are doing task one by one okay and they are the per people who are actually working at a skill level they have some tasks they do this okay and that's it what happen at this level <clears throat> these sort of people are generally generally if you say, if you see organizations in organization they are like people who work from 9 to 5 they said okay our time is over now it's now we have to go back and that's it and they work at a level of skill and they are more into self they said okay to for survival i need some job and that's it and they work 9 to 5 and as time come closer they are gone so, you know there there was a research uh, by stanford university i guess and in that university they collected a lot of data from different people and based on different successful people and i think more, i think 26% of sales people and some other people all of those people they said when they are in attitude attitude is more important than skill if you have got a lot of skill but not the right attitude you will never going to achieve your objective similarly in this story they move when they saw some few people who are working at a middle level and they are working with such a synchronized way with such a team work which you can actually see the team work the i mean the relationship between them and they see the harmony between all of them and they all are working in a synchronized way they are inspired by something they want to achieve they want to make a difference and that is called attitude and that attitude help them to achieve bigger objective and that help them to achieve uh, the bigger picture so that they can you know they can feel that difference so this is the second layer the third and the final foremost layer is uh, where people are collaborating and there they are at a level of cause and when you are at level of cause you are so much fulfilled and you feel you, it's kind of a self actualization you know what like people who are working uh, like mother teresa okay she is working at a level of cause she want to make some difference she want to make some impact similarly people in an organization you know you really if you start working at a level of cause that you know you are contributing to the main objective believe me you will not only be highly engaged but you will be more satisfied because you know that you are contributing to the bigger cause to the bigger objective so that organization will be successful and that is you can feel your share you can feel your contribution in that particular uh, uh, setup in your particular environment so <clears throat> 
let's move on to the next part and there you will see about a different kind of scenario where people how people react actually based on certain people behaviors so that is called the circle of no resistance or circle of internal rebellion and the circle of external rebellion so let's talk about the circle of no resistance or communication fulfills individual emotional drive for example i have said okay uh, vishnu can you please give me a glass of water you said why why not i'm, I'm going to give you a glass of water and you are like happily do it maybe second time i'll said and you know my through my communication my objective is getting achieved because i requested you that you know can you can you kindly give me a glass of water so it is a kind of a very very soft way and nothing is being you know being violated by my behavior okay and you said okay fair enough secondly i say the same thing i said can you give me a glass of water vishnu and it will automatically it it affects you said ah what is wrong with this person why is the hell i am giving water i mean how the hell is reacting with me i'm i'm not going to give him water but again due to certain scenario you might give me some water and you said okay here it is your water and maybe you don't react in that way that is called circle of internal rebellion and communication goes against your pro you know your primary emotional drive you said okay it is actually affecting your emotional drive for maybe significance or maybe love but it is affecting you in a negative way you might give it to him but you know it's not what you wanted to do and the third one you said it in a very rude way go and get me a glass of water and that actually transcend your core values and once you you know things getting way out of that you will definitely will going to uh, give the feedback you said no i'm not going to give you water and believe me it might have happened with you did you ever notice uh, uh, that you know at at any level that at time someone said to you and you really reacted in that way that you know i'm not going to give you or i'm not about glass of water anything if someone is really rude to you you will said oh, no i'm not going to do do it yourself maybe with your sibling or oh, no, no, go and get yourself oh, so this this actually has happened with you and we can relate it very quickly the the, the most dangerous part is a circle of internal rebellion you know i said something to you and uh, maybe that is against your primary emotional drive but you're not give me feedback that how you felt and those feedback if if it is not given to you it will be very dangerous because you know later on those things are you know accumulating 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 and one fine day it will going to give a negative feedback of yours to other maybe at that time you said something in some other way but that perception of yours will be built and people will start uh, comparing with you with other people they don't know no, no, he is no he is always like that he is he is not a you know very cooperative person he don't collaborate and all that so we need to avoid such situation and externally billion you get the feedback instantly and that is actually is good in a way that you know you now you know your boundaries and the other person knows how he is going to react so you won't go beyond those uh, boundaries or beyond those uh, uh, circles so uh, once you know for example if i ask you uh, let's say for example uh, in this you see uh, there's a there's a beggar and there is a king he said okay this is a pot of gold you can take it it's all yours whatever you wanted to do you can do but there is one condition you cannot share it you cannot spend it you cannot uh, buy anything but it's all yours so what are you going to do this vishnu if i give you this pot of gold with all these conditions what is your reaction yeah it's kind of uh, taking everything utilizing to the maximum potential yeah but you cannot do anything you cannot spend it you cannot Uh, share it you cannot do anything actually but it's all yours so are you going to accept this one doesn't value anything so exactly value. yeah even if you've got a you know you've got pot of gold but it's useless yeah. it is just another it's useless no point of use exactly so your emotional drive 
are zero in that case because you cannot achieve your other things oh. through that. Similarly, someone gave it to you that, okay, do whatever you wanted to do, right? Wow. Then what will happen? I, I mean, you know, I said, oh, wow, $10 million. Now I'm going to go to this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do this. You know, a lot of things came into my mind. And, you know, I want to achieve my emotional gratification through those, through that $10 million and all that, right? I said, oh, wow, now I'm going to do this. So your emotional drives automatically came in, right? Once you know that you can do a lot of uh, things with this money. So this is how actually, you know, how our emotional drives get triggered and how we react, okay? Based on different scenarios when once we are being given such kind of authority. So, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I'll move on to the next one. <clears throat> I'll show you what are the emotional drives. There are eight type of emotional drives, right? So uh, the first one is the emotional drive for love and belonging. Love and belonging, normally, you know, you want to get connected. You want to be with people. You want to be good with people. Okay, you said, okay, yeah, uh, you know, you want to be loved by other people. And at time, for example, you get emotional gratifications. For example, I said something, someone to, yeah, hi, how are you? And all that. So you, you are getting, he said, yeah, I'm good. How are you as well? So you, you, you feel good. Okay, you get emotional gratification through their action, but through your action. I said okay, in this way. At times, some people also get this emotional drive in a negative way. And, and the negative way is whining, oh, you know, it's not like this. I don't like this environment. Everybody is against me. And, you know, things are not happening. Whining, whining is, you know, it's again, what, what will happen in such case that people said, oh, no, don't worry, you will get it and you, you, everything will be fine and all this, okay. So you, in that negative way, you are also getting this love and belonging, but in a negative way. But whining is not good, in, in other words, you, you don't want whining every time. So these are the little, uh, emotional drive which you see, you which you want from people, you want this love and belonging and care from people, you want to connect with people, you want uh, to connect, uh, through this uh, belongingness, through this love, through this care. This is the first emotional drive and you want, you feel more gratified. Okay. If you are high on love and belonging and you find it, believe me, you, you will be, this will become your primary motivator. You will be highly satisfied. You will be highly engaged. Second one is uh, the emotional drive for security and control. It's a two sorted kind of uh, emotional drive and at times in the security and control, you want to keep control in your hand. You are a control freak. You said, okay, no, this is how I'm going to do it. And it will like this. And you want things within your circle. You said, okay, this is how you are going to do. And this, that's it. this is it. You, suppose you are a boss, you are high on security and control. Other person who is like high on growth and diversity he want to adopt new things and he's no and he wanted to do certain things but you are high on control and security you said no 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 you're not going to do this so in a way you are actually you are uh, over his emotional drive so it is affecting other team members how it is affecting i'm going to tell you in the next part so in security and control you want things to be in your own way you are be, you are in a way you become micromanager okay without realizing how it affects people how it affects team, how it affects your relationship, and how it affects uh, the productivity, in fact, the, the bigger objective. So security and control is about yourself, your own self, about your own gratification and your own control thing. It is, it is good, but again, depending upon in which scenario you are in. Maybe people have high on it, but how it affects other people on team is uh, really going to have a negative impact. The third one <clears throat> is the emotional drive for uh, diversity and change. You know what? Uh, whenever we uh, you, we want to have diversity, we want uh, to try new things. We said, okay, let's try this one. Let's do this. So you are high on diversity. You want to take risks. You said, okay, I'm going to take risks. And I'll, I'll, go do, I'll do this thing. First, I said, okay, I'm going to establish my company. I'm going to do certain ventures. I have got 
I have got so much of diversity and change, uh, uh, emotional drive, and that will actually primarily motivate for me. But on the other hand, for example, if my emotional drive for security and control is a little bit high, I will, I might not uh, go, uh, going to take a lot of risk because of the security and control. It will stop me on doing these things. But similarly, if I am low on the, uh, security and control, I will definitely will going to take risk. I will definitely will going to explore new things, new ways of doing things. Maybe you said, okay, this is an old problem. Let's solve it. There's some new pro a new uh, solution, and you will going to succeed it. Or if you are not on that, you said you are you are doing it your own way, and nothing is happening. So what's the point? So you take risk, and you take you want to change things through your emotional drive for diversity and change. The next one, <clears throat> emotional drive, is uh, the drive for uh, recognition and significance. Definitely, as I told you earlier, that you know uh, Mother Teresa, that you know she wants uh, uh, she make an impact. She is being recognized. She she might be high on significance because she is making an impact. She is at a cause level. She at a very big level, and she wanted to give back to communities. And she said, okay, and Similarly, <clears throat> if you are in an organization, right, and you want to achieve really something really big, so you want that you should be recognized. You should be recognized as, okay, yeah, he did it actually. And that gives you emotional gratification that, that acts your primary motivator. And that drives you, actually, that helps you achieving a lot of things because you are high on recognition and significance. Similarly, the next emotional drive is uh, achievement. You want, you said, okay, I want to achieve certain milestones and this is, I'm going to achieve it. So in achieving those milestones, you set different uh, parameters. You said, okay, after this, you will achieve this. Then, you know, once you set those milestones, you will you know, achieve the bigger objective and that will help you. And that actually drives you achieving those things. If you're high on achievement, you will going to achieve those things in a very, very, uh, and you will get emotionally gratified by achieving those uh, small milestones to achieve the bigger one. Similarly, uh, there is another uh, emotional drive for challenge and growth. You want say, said, okay, I want uh, the, this emotional drive where I can, you know, uh, I want to grow. And that actually this, uh, this emotional drive, you will get gratification through, you know, challenge yourself. You said, okay, it's not happening maybe uh, I can uh, do it in a much better way and let me, that will help me in my growth and that help you in uh, taking different challenges as well within your uh, lifespan, within your professional life, your personal life and that drives you to grow, to grow further, to grow more and to make a difference. And the <clears throat> last one, but not the least, is the responsibility and contribution. You said, you, I want to give back to the community. I want to give back uh, to the loved one, to the people who need, who, who, who really are, uh, you know, uh, uh, in dire need or really wanted to be helped. So this kind of, the people with this kind of uh, emotional drive tend to you know, want to give people back. They want to give community back. They want to give the environment uh, something they said okay i'm going to do something really good for the environment is because this environment uh, maybe people working uh, with the, uh, like you know for this global heat thing uh, you know the global uh, warming thing so they want to make some difference so that you know it can help the environment so their sense of responsibility and contribution they get emotional gratification through uh, these uh, responsive i mean uh, through contribution and um, Responsibilities. So, as he know, as a hero, he knows about all the emotional drives. Now he has got <clears throat> the bow of success, and this arrow of success leads him to the next part, <clears throat> where this Rama, Jack, and Mary they all are there, and they see, okay, this is how you know. Now I know the emotional drives of people, how they are how, what are their primary motivators and how I'm going to be successful. So they move on to the Oracle of performance prediction. I'll quickly go through this, this Oracle or performance prediction. Actually it's, it's a combination of 
different Egyptian gods and what sort of emotional drives they have actually. If you see that you can see different emotional drives associated with these gods and they work in that particular way. So just take it maybe in silos, maybe people working in an organization, some have this emotional drive, some has the other one emotional drive. So I'm just quickly going through because just treat them as different people in organization with different set of emotional drives. So what happened? Who we are in a group is largely determined by the combination of our primary motivators with the primary motivator of the people in the group. For, for example, maybe I am I have certain emotional drive which is not aligned with the group. Definitely, I will going to be a misfit if people really don't know my emotional drive, and it will affect the synergy of the group itself. It will, it will not it will not going to be productive. Rather, it will going to have a negative impact on the environment. So this is very important to know your primary motivators and the team motivator and how it helps. I will let you know why it is important. Let's say there are two people with different emotional drives and those both gods have their own way of doing things. So there might be a situation, there will be a conflict. There could be a good team depending upon their emotional drive mix and how they will going to achieve their objectives. So emotional drives, again, there are a team of five people or four people. Maybe there is a proper leader but within group there is a person who is uh, who is who has got common emotional drive with the whole group he knows the purpose he will become an access leader access leader is a default by default leader who will make who will help making things done other than the normal leader so this is this is how this team thing actually work you, you identify the access leader and he will enable things uh, enable a, a team to achieve the bigger objective and if the emotional drivers of a person in a group do not match the emotional type makes up the group, people will become underachiever. Like same happened when we discussed about the awareness thing. People are underachiever. They will pollute the environment, disengagement, maybe not alignment with the business objective and ultimately affecting the environment. And no, uh, they, they were unable to achieve the group, uh, group objectives. So if I ask you, to have a, a right team, what I'm going to do, I will going to have such a team, such a mix that I know that, for example, I have five people. I selected those people and I know their emotional drive that what actually maybe I selected all people with security and uh, control. Believe me, it will it will going to be a failure because everybody is high on security and control and less on other emotional drives. So everybody wants their control and it will be a failure. So we, we need to develop such teams to be successful that they, uh, you, uh, I mean, they should have a mix of such an emotional drive that will enable to achieve objectives by enabling their own emotional gratification. And uh, what happened is, uh, you know what, once uh, your emotional drives are not being uh, you know fulfilled it will have a negative impact for example i tell you uh, did you ever experience that you know you are doing something and anyone else took your you know the credit oh you know or maybe try to take your position it might happen for example you know you are going in a car okay and you said okay i know i need to drop someone and I know I need to take right, but that person, maybe he's on high on uh, uh, security control. He said, no, 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 take right. I said, I know that, why he's saying this to me. So actually he tried to consume my emotional drive. Similarly, what happened is in such cases, it is called need sucking. And need sucking is very, very contagious. What happened is in need sucking, you are actually need suck other people emotional drive. You said, ah, do this way. I know this way. But again, someone is saying this, so he is tried to overcome. He was he's tried to, you know, he uh, overcome your emotional drive. He said, No, 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 do this way. So it is actually affecting your relationships. And you, what will you do? You will tend to go in conflicts. And once you suppose if you are aware of all these things, so what the smart way of doing thing is, you said, okay. I'll do this, let them fulfill their emotional drives, but let them know that, you know, this is, 
your way, but this I know this way. So you will be uh, in a situation where there will be less conflicts and more synergy. Definitely, nobody wants to be in uh, conflicts. But again, once someone starts sucking your uh, emotional drive, it will badly affect your relationship. It will badly affect your emotional drive. So, but you need to be aware of people's emotional drive to be in a healthy relationship, to be, to have a healthy environment, to have a, a full, uh, you can say a, a teamwork that will enable you to achieve bigger objectives. So in short, if you see, you have to maximize uh, to, this is the pillar of team performance, maximize emotional drives that support objective. This we learned. We have identified the access leader observe the need for security of people you you you, you should not you know you, you at times you you use fear as a motivator if you don't do this is this all going to happen so at times this also happened in organization you know you said okay if you're not going to do this you i might get fired it is kind of a, a motivator but a negative way but it happens with you and the last one common emotional drive in line with your team objective. This is very critical. You need to be aligned with your team emotional drivers. Otherwise, you will going to be, it will going to be a failure. So again, emotional drive, motivation, team working, they all are linked. So in this case, once you know the emotional drives, uh, how people are going to react and how they will going to achieve certain things, your circle of tolerance again i'm talking about circle of tolerance it will be bigger definitely you will start accepting things you know okay this person you know the ambiguity relief process you know the colored brain you know how he's getting clarity now you know his emotional drive as well so combining all those things all those awarenesses it will definitely will going to have a positive impact on your relationships on you on people around you on achieving objective on see that, okay, yes, now I can see myself as, um, a, you know, a hero. I can able to achieve uh, whatever I wanted to achieve. And same, you know, being, uh, you know, in that case, the king who wanted to have this pyramid built, he said, now, yes, I built that pyramid. I did it because he, actually fulfilled emotional drives of people through their emotional gratification. I'll give you a quick example of a quick one story and then I'll wrap up. Uh, you might heard about, uh, 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 there is a veil, you know, you might, you have seen like in marine world normally, there is a veil and it, it jumps around 20 feet high. It's not like that. It has not happened in just a blink of an eye and there was a theory behind it. For example, how it get trained. The trainer, he shows a small fish within the pool. Okay, okay, this is, and that big whale of a fish, just eat it. And then he raised the bar. He gave the fish at the level of the pool. Said, okay, fair enough. Then he slightly raised the bar, maybe four feet, five feet and 10 feet. So gradually that, dolphin or that fish knows that you know to get this one i have to jump this high and ultimately and by gratifying it jumped over 20 feet and this is how uh, that trainer or that uh, instructor get able that fish to jump so high similarly in organizations if we uh, you know if we give this you know this is called the brain food brain food in a way uh, the emotional gratification if you fulfill people emotional gratification they tend to give you the results which you want they want to work for you they want to be uh, you know you are fulfilling their emotional drive you are fulfilling uh, what they want they will ultimately will going to fulfill what you want as a team, what company wants, and ultimately your overall organizational objectives will going to be achieved. You will be a successful leader. You will be a successful uh, person. You will be a successful professional or in your relationships, you will be a good father. You will be a good husband. You could be a good partner. And that will enable you to be uh, successful and uh, achieve whatever you wanted to achieve. So this is it. Thank you so much for listening. Now, if you want to 
ask any question, any comments, you are most welcome to share your comments. I would like to hear well, from you, Amit. Yes. Well, well done for uh, you know all that education that you've done there, Shahid. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Amit. Vishnu. Yeah, it was quite insightful. Uh, got to know something different. We'll still explore further. So you have done some certification on this or what? How yeah, actually, I, I just completed my train the trainer program. It is called Directive Communication Psychology and it is run from Indonesia. And uh, it's a very good program. And, you know, initially I, I also thought that it's kind of a tool, something like personality traits or something like that. But it is a oh. totally different program. It is about how you are getting clarity, how you can remove blame culture, how you can improve team culture. But that is again through your ambiguity process. And I, I recently, you know, it is one of uh, you can say in like top 30 programs. Uh, we recently oh. this program is number third rated um, among the leadership development programs. So it is a very very. I mean, I just put it like, I mean, even this one program, that this this uh, the first story. It is a three-day mm -hmm. program. I just compressed it in like just two hours. All these three programs is quite extensive, quite detailed. I just try to, you know, compress it like in two or two and a half hours. So that is why you, I was. So they take some kind of assessment or something like how you get to know the colors of each. Piece yes, of yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, there is a tool, and that is called colored. Uh, uh, this is called uh, uh, fill those questionnaire, and based on that. There will a report will be generated and then that report you will find your color and also you will find uh, the miscommunication gaps with other colors so suppose if you are a green color for example in that graph you will also see okay how which color is more you you, you have miscommunication with so that it's a group kind of activity it's a you know in leadership development normally you see how i am as a leader and how other people are in my team uh, gets clarity and what are their styles i mean what are their colored brains so it, there is a tool for everyone i mean in for for colored brain there is a tool for emotional drive there is a tool to see the perception gaps so i don't i cannot use those tools right now in this short period but there are a lot of tools and all uh, all are being you know <laughs> excellent work by the way yeah really insightful uh really interesting and it's actually really helpful in nature yeah, great sure. work. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, again, all of you for attending my session and uh, see you next time in some other session. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.